Hey guys, this is a little bit different. Many of you know, whenever I teach, I if there's a 50 foot stage, I'm gonna cover all 50 feet in that stage. But now, I'm staring at uh, an iPhone. Um, so this will be different, but uh, I, th I think the Lord has a, a message for us all today. So, here we go, here we go. I was thinking to myself, you know, what's, what's going on? In the world today what what would God have us here right now have uh, last week we spoke a little bit about how we've been here before and I got to thinking yeah we we have we have been here before I, I look at um, I'm remember reminded of uh, the Passover the Passover in scriptures because a lot of us right now are all holed up right we're practicing social distancing so we're keeping our distance from one another we're, we're, we're staying inside we're staying away from other people Man, that kind of, some similarities are there with Passover, isn't it? Uh, we're in Exodus 12 here, and, and uh, what happens is God's people, Israel, the, the Israelites, uh, they, uh, they have been slaves for generations and generations and generations. So grandpa's generation, slaves. His grandpa's generation, Slaves, all the stories of your family's history for recent generations, the story is that of slavery. And your faith says we have hope in God and we'll be rescued one day. Yeah, that's, that's a cute story. But uh, grandpa was a slave. His grandpa was a slave. My kids are slaves. And I have a feeling that my grandkids will be slaves too. So that's where you're at, right? And then this cat named Moses comes along. And he's been saying, hey, I've been talking with God. We busting out. We're getting out of here. And you're like, what are you, what are you talking about, Moses? What are, you know? Um, and then God comes and he says, hey, here's all I need you all to do. I need you to sacrifice a lamb. Uh, smear that blood on the doorpost of your, of your house, okay? It's getting a little weird, but this is the story. Um, and then, and then hole up in there, hole up inside your home with your family, have a special meal while you're holed up in there. And tonight death is going to come around. Uh, the, the, a plague of death at one, one point in the Bible, it calls it that a plague of death will sweep through the community outside your door is death. Stay inside. I don't know about you, I would be scared. I would be freaked out. Like, death is outside my door. Yeah, I'm going to hole up in here, but what keeps death from coming inside here? Like some blood I smeared all over the door, the door jams? Like, I'm freaked out right now. I'm scared right now. Uh, I have fears right now. Anybody tracking with me? Do you, any of you fearful right now? Um, so what do we do with that fear? Uh, let's continue on with the story. Um, where's my notes at? Here we go. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that, that, that the scriptures also says is, uh, yeah, death's coming tonight. But guys, we're about to bust out. Freedom's just around the corner. Uh, Exodus 12, uh, verse 11 says the following. And this is re regarding the meal that they're going to eat while they're holed up. Uh, these are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed. Wear your sandals and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency. For this is the Lord's Passover. Be ready to go. Have your walking stick ready. He goes on with this whole big deal about not using yeast in, in your bread because uh, for, 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 for that situation. Because... We ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for bread to rise. We're busting out. It's time to go. Yes, there's a great fear right now for uh, God's people, but there's also this great hope of freedom and a future. And we're leaving. We're leaving soon, so be ready to go. I would be scared in that house right now. But yet I'm reminded by God's instructions to have my walking stick ready, to be fully dressed, to be have, to have my sandals on, that, that, 
that freedom and hope. Hope is now. Freedom is just around the corner. Uh, little side note here. In, in verse uh, 16, uh, it goes on to say, um, uh, for generations and generations after this moment, um, I want you to remember this day, the day that the, the, the freedom came to you. And, and, and have a celebration. And uh, verse 16, no work of any kind may be done on these days except in the preparation of food. Two things there. Um, one, you'll notice what God is telling them and how he differentiates himself from the other gods of the time is he's not saying, hey, make this food and sacrifice it to me. He's not saying that. He's not saying, I want to eat your food. He's saying, you make this food, and you eat it. Uh, he actually gets pretty intense about it. In verse 10, uh, he says, Do not leave any of it until the next morning, but whatever is not eaten, uh, burn whatever is not eaten before morning. I don't need your food. You need me. You need my food. I will provide for you. I will sustain you. I don't need you to give me food. I am an all-powerful I am the all-powerful God. I don't need your food. You eat it. And whatever you don't eat, burn it up. So I don't need your leftovers. And isn't, that, isn't that powerful? God's telling us who he is and, and how we can lean on him. And he's not, he doesn't need to lean on us. He doesn't need to lean on us. Um, and he goes on and he says, as you remember for generations and generations after this, as you remember the Passover, uh, verse 10 uh, also says, um, I'm sorry, verse 16 says, uh, no work of any kind may be done on these days except in the preparation of food. So you continue to eat during your, your celebrations to remember this, but don't work. So here's my side note on that, uh, rest. You guys, use this time. If you're holed up somewhere, I know some of us are able to work from home, right? Um, but some of us have a little extra time in our hands right now, which brings more stress because, I mean, are we getting the hours at work? What is this affecting our, our income? Is You know, I, I, I hear that. But if you have a little extra time right now to rest, do so. But I'm used. To, but but you might be used to going at a breakneck speed. You're you're involved in, in this organization. Your kids are involved in this organization, and uh, usually you have after hours calls for work and this and that. And right now that's not happening. So your life has come to to uh, a major slowdown. You got a little whiplash right now. Rest a little bit. Rest a little bit. Take a take a hike with your kids. Hey, Perry County folks. We are blessed to have a lot of forest, natural forest and trails surrounding us. And if you want to social distance, you can social, you can distance yourself socially uh, in these woods around here. Um, go get out on the trail. Take your family hiking. Um, get out in nature. Sometimes the best way to deal with fear is just to step out into God's creation, into nature, and be like, the God who created all this is still in control. The God who created all this loves me. And that can, that, that can bring a sense of peace. Go play a board game with the kids. Uh, rest a little bit. On with the, main, uh, with the main story here. I recognize that a lot of you guys have much bigger issues in your life right now than the coronavirus. I recognize that some of you have much scarier health concerns right now than this uh, than this. Uh, pandemic. I recognize that uh, some of you all right now are scared to death that the fight that you had and the friction you're currently experiencing with a friend, you're afraid it's never going to go back to being normal. That friendship's broken now forever. I know a lot of you right now are really uh, afraid that you're not going to get into the college program that you hope you're going to get, get into. Because if you don't get into that, then, then, then what's the rest of your future look like? And that wasn't your plan. And I know a lot of you all right now, uh, we're all in different stages of life. Some of you reckon, uh, are fearful you're not going to get to have that season of pick a sport or activity. 
because Bob is being canceled right now. I know a lot of you all have more personal fears right now that are unique uh, to, to, to a group of people or to you specifically. And that's really what's weighing on your heart right now. Not to minimize um, our, our concerns about uh, the coronavirus, um, but just to be honest about what our real fears are because we all have our own fears. God's people, they took blood. They sacrificed a lamb, took blood, and put it on the doorpost of the house. And that was their safety, and that was their hope that evening. Um, our hope as believers in Christ is the um, hope we have in Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross for us, his blood, if you will. That's our hope is Jesus. And so what does that mean? When we say we have hope in Jesus, what, what does that mean? I, I, we need to talk about that tonight, uh, today, whatever time you're you're, you're looking, listen to this. Um, one, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get the coronavirus. Having hope in Jesus doesn't mean you're not going to get the coronavirus. Having hope in Jesus doesn't mean that your relationships are uh, going to be fixed. It doesn't mean you're going to get the promotion. It doesn't mean um, you're going to get into that college program, that you're going to make the team. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that God is a uh, Santa Claus type figure who uh, answers your wish list with all the things you want. It, it doesn't mean that at all. Now I'm not minimalizing uh, your desires. You, you, you want people to be healed of illnesses. That's a, that's a good and holy thing. And we pray to that end. Um, I'm just saying God doesn't promise to, to fix all those things. Here's what Jesus tells us. Jesus tells us that we are victors in him. God tells us we are victors in Christ. And that's powerful. Um, so what's that look like? It means that we're victors uh, not only in the age to come, but in this, this life now. It means that God will walk through these issues with you. So the Israelites, they were free. Yeah, but now what? Like, where the heck are we going? <laughs> you know, what if these Egyptians change their mind and they would come after us? Guess what? They do. And where do we have to go? I don't know, because we run into a big sea and there's nowhere we can go drown or we get slaughtered by the Egyptians. Will God show up? And God did show up for them. For them. It was still a very, very difficult journey, wasn't it? For the Israel Israelites. It was... Uh, and they didn't always know where they were going to eat. It, it was difficult, long, tiresome. It was a rough journey. And, and, and what God promises us is that he will go through our journeys with us. That's the hope we have. Can he bring healing about in your relationships? Absolutely he can. Does he promise to? No. Will he be with you through it? Yes, he will. We already heard uh, a testimony of how God goes through things with us and how those journeys can be hard. But that is the Christian life. God promises to go th through things with you. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you. He has not forgotten you. He loves you. So what's it look right now for us to be the church? Because right now some people are, are criticizing uh, churches for um, canceling services. Because if we don't have services, then are we even the church? And heck yeah, we're the church. We're the, we're the church. Uh, it's time for us to be the church. You know, we have brothers and sisters around the globe, brothers and sisters in Christ, who don't have church buildings. Believe it or not, check out the church of Iran. Um, they are heavily persecuted. Uh, they do not meet in public buildings. Um, it is not safe. For them, yet they are growing. Uh, the the church is growing at a rapid pace in Iran, believe it or not. And those are our brothers and sisters are in Christ, doing 
doing being the church today? What's it look like for us to be the church without meeting in person, without meeting in our in our buildings? Uh, it means that we love one another. It means that we check on our brothers and sisters. Um, hey, have you heard back from the college yet? Did you get Did you get accepted? Hey, uh, do you, do you do you need an extra roll of toilet paper? <laughs> Um, do you need somebody to go get the groceries for you? Because I'm going into town. I've got to go get some. I can bring some to you. Um, have you reached out to your friend? Have you heard from them lately? Are things better there yet? You check in on one another. You love people. You lift each other up in prayer. Um, as I said last week, we, we, we've been here before. We've been here before. Right now is the time for us to, to love people. And to not panic, not to hoard food, not to, um, not to spread false information via our Facebook pages, um, but to uh, love one another. Um, I don't believe God sent the coronavirus to punish us. I think yet God gets blamed for too many bad things in the world. I do think that God is our hope. Not 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 just to get through the coronavirus, but God is our hope in our life's journey, in our faith journey. So that's my encouragement for you today. My challenge for you is this. Um, if you're fearful if you're fearful today. Uh, spend some time with God in prayer and be like, you know, I'm, I'm fearful about this, God. Um, show me show me your encouragement. Show me your hope. Remind me that I have you. Remind me that I'm not alone. Remind me that I'm not forgotten. And be the church. Be sure to reach out to those around you uh, and, and lift them up. When I say around you, I mean via the internet or Facebook Messenger or text or something like that. Guys, I love you. Uh, be good. And uh, we'll get through this together uh, with, uh, with God. Peace. Why did I say peace? I never said. <laughs> God bless, guys.